Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about tactile receptors. Now, tactile receptors are responsible basically for doing things such as touch, pressure, which basically all touch is pressure, vibration, they can feel temperature, uh, they can feel pain, stretching, proprioception, and things such as that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now I'm going to go over five different types of receptors. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first type of receptor I want to talk about is something called a free nerve endin. So now, the free nerve endins, basically they're found all over the body. Okay, so these are going to be found all over the body, right? Basically what their main function is, is to feel pain and temperature. But they do do other things such as touch, pressure, everything I just described, touch, pressure, vibration, and things such as that. Um, also, feel other, I'm gonna call those tactile sensations. Okay, the fact that they can feel touch and pressure and things such as that. Um, I'm gonna call those the tactile sensations. So let's go ahead and get started on this. And Here's the thing about my free nerve endings. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw a layer of skin. So here's my layer of skin right here. Right? This is the top part of the layer. This is the part that you can see. And this is known as your stratum corneum. Okay? And then underneath the stratum corneum, I am going to draw some epithelial cells. So as you get closer to the surface of the skin, these are get thinner, okay? As we get down away from the surface of the skin, these actually are a thicker shape, okay? And so let me go with one more thin. Now I'm gonna start going a little bit thicker, okay? I am not drawing the disc in these, I'm sorry, the nucleus in these, simply because of the time. So this is the top layer of the skin once again. Okay, and like I said, we call it the stratum corneum. That's made up of dead skin. This part here is known as the epidermis. Okay, that's my epidermis. And that includes the top part too. So now with the free nerve endings, basically free nerve endings are found between epithelial cells. They're going to be found between my epithelial cells. Now you're looking at something flat here. Imagine this being like, you know, all over your skin. So I am going to have three nerve endings that go like this. Okay. And so the ones that are closest to the top layer of the skin, I'm going to call those my superficial free nerve endings. Those are my superficial free nerve endings, which would be like that right there, because it's closer to the top of the skin. Now, the superficial free nerve endings, what these will do is these are going to sense temperatures between 50 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Now, if you notice, I, I had some that were down in here, right? These are going to be my deep free nerve endings free nerve endings, right? FNE is gonna stand for free nerve endings. So here's what happens with my free nerve endings. Is I have, these will sense temperatures between 90 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's gonna sense between 90 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit right there. So now, what happens if we get outside this range? Well, here's what's going to happen is, on the end of each of these, there's like a little bulb, right? And so, this is not to be confused with a capsule. These are not encapsulated. That's why they're called free nerve endings. They do not have a capsule. In a minute, I'll be talking about things that do have a capsule. So let's, let's take a look, and I'm gonna just draw one of these free nerve endings. And like all cells, they have a double lipid bilayer. This is going to be my plasma membrane. Okay. That's gonna be my plasma membrane. And then 
I'm going to have a protein that's in here. And I'm going to call this protein vanilloid. Okay, so this is my vanilloid. Right there. Okay, that's a plasma protein. Now here's what's going to happen. If I touch something above 120 degrees, you know what it feels like. It hurts, right? If I touch something below 50 degrees, it may take a little bit more time to feel pain from it, but there's eventually I will feel pain. Try grabbing an ice cube and hold it on for a little bit of time. So what's going to happen is I'm going to feel some pain here, right? Well, I'm not going to feel pain yet. When this gets, when I get outside these temperatures here, this is going to open up, right? And it's going to create a channel. And what's going to happen is I am going to have ions come in through this channel. And when that happens, now the nerve is activated. It's going to send an impulse to the brain, and that's going to be sensed as pain, right? Otherwise, up until that point, I was just feeling whatever it was, cold or hot, right? But after that point, I'm actually going to feel, um, I'm actually going to feel pain, right? Another thing that can do this is if you've ever had chili peppers, uh, the cap uh, capacin in chili peppers can also cause this because you actually have this on your tongue also. You also have proteins in here, which are activated by histamine. Now, if you've ever had allergies, you take an antihistamine to stop the release of histamine. Histamine causes inflammation. So what's gonna happen is, when you have histamine, that's gonna cause this to open up, ions will go in, and you will get a, a feeling like you gotta scratch the area. It feels like an itch, right? So that's also gonna be on some of the free nerve endings. So that gives you an idea of what free nerve endings do. They're, again, they're between the epithelial cells. Their main responsibility is pain and temperature, but they do sense other types of things. So let's go ahead and go on. And what I'm going to do now is in this area, I am going to draw a, let me use purple again. I am going to draw a hair follicle. Now hair follicles come all the way down into the dermis. Okay, there's my hair follicle. That's where my hair is gonna be made. And let's make this person a redhead. So this is in the bowl, and now I have hair sticking out, right? There's my hair. Now, if you look at your skin, you can see hair that's on there. So now, the next receptor that we're going to talk about is something called a hair follicle receptor. These are going to be responsible for feeling things such as light touch. They're going to be responsible for feeling distortion. Okay? And movement on the skin. So imagine somebody comes along and they rub your skin, or if you rub your skin yourself, you're bending these hairs. And when you bend the hair, what happens is the hair bending, oh, I didn't draw that. I am gonna have nerves attached down here onto this hair follicle. Okay? And they're gonna be attached onto this. So these are gonna be my dendrites right here, and then my receptors are going to be on here. These are actually free nerve endings also, okay? But they happen to be on a hair follicle. That's why they call it a hair follicle receptor. So as, as, as you do something to the hair, the hair bends, and it sends a signal down here, which is going to activate this, which is then going to send a signal to the brain. It doesn't send a signal down, I'm sorry. It causes movement down here. When we get the movement, that sends a signal to the brain. Just like you saw a minute ago when we said talk about the sodium rushing in, same thing is going to happen here. Now, the other thing on this, imagine that you have a bug that lands on your skin, right? And he starts to crawl around on your skin. Well, as they crawl around, they're going to hit the hair. That's gonna send a light touch signal to the brain that there's something on the skin Go ahead and take a look. You're gonna look and go, oh my God, a bug. So you do one of two things, right? You either hit it and kill it, or you knock it off, right? Imagine a mosquito comes to land on your body to get some blood. 
and it bends the hair also as it lands. That sends that movement translates all the way down into here, which is going to send a signal to the brain, and you're going to feel the bug that's on your skin also. So that's your hair follicle receptor. So let's go on. <clears throat> the next one is not really encapsulated, but at the same time, it's not it's it's not a free nerve ending also. So let me draw my skin again. Okay? And I'm gonna draw. Let me see. I you know what? I don't really need to draw all the epithelial cells. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw it like this. Okay? And then what's gonna happen is this next one is going to be located in the deepest layer of the epidermis. So these are going to be down around here, okay? Now remember, you have a whole bunch of cells. I just drew a few. So the next, this, this one's gonna be called a Merkel's disc, okay? And these are also known as tactile disc. So here's what's going to happen on here is first, these are going to help with fine touch, okay? And they're going to help with pressure. Now, these cells that you see down here, and again, there's a whole bunch of them. I only drew four. You're gonna have a whole bunch of these. These cells are, we are going to call, I'm gonna draw, actually draw these bigger here. Actually, you know what? Let's go like this. I'm gonna just draw this larger, okay? because I'm gonna be right inside of this. So this is my Merkel's disc, I'm sorry. These cells that are down in here are called Merkel's cells. Now, Merkel's cells are basically in areas of this body that don't have hair. So these are my Merkel cells here. Now attached to my Merkel cells, I actually have something called a Merkel's disc. Now I've seen things that say the Merkel disc is attached to the cell, and I've seen things that say the end of the dendrite contains the Merkel disc. So I'm just gonna make it its own separate entity here that's a part of the dendrite. So here's my Merkel disc, right? And then there's my dendrite, which is going to carry the signal back down to the nerve. So imagine I would have all that on here. Normally a group of dendrites are going to associate with a group of Merkel cells. And again, Merkel cells are enlarged, hairless epithelial cells. Inside of my Merkel cells, we actually have some chemicals. Okay? Now, if someone presses down on the skin, if someone presses down on the skin, what's going to happen is this is going to translate down to these Merkel cells. And these Merkel cells here are going to release these chemicals into the Merkel's disc. When it releases chemicals into the Merkel's disc, that is now going to send a signal down the nerve, and then it's gonna to go to the brain, and you're gonna feel these sensations here. So once again, for what it's worth, this is in the deepest layer of the epidermis. Okay, so once again, it's going to do fine touch and pressure. We press down, we're going to get the sensation, and it's going to, we're going to release chemicals from the Merkel cells into the Merkel's disc, which sends a signal to the brain. So let's go on to the next one, which sounds similar to this. Okay, the next one is going to also be in hairless areas of the body. Okay, so this is called a Meisner's corpuscle. Now this is the first one that is fully encapsulated. So this is encapsulated. It has a capsule. I'm gonna draw that in just a minute. Okay, it's going to feel things like fine touch, pressure, and low frequency 
vibrations. Okay, so that's what this one's going to feel. Now, this whole layer in here is called the epidermis, and this is the top layer of our, of our skin. This is actually the, the part of the skin you see. This is right below that. So this was called the epidermis. Now, I am going to find my Meisner's corpuscles right underneath this area here. So let me go like this. I think I'll use green. So I'm just going to draw my Meisner's corpuscles. Just imagine them being down in here. Okay, so these are my Meisner's. Okay, these were my Merkel. I'm just going to call these Merkel discs. There and there. Okay, with this, with the cells. Okay, so remember, some books are saying it's all one piece. Some books say the you have the Merkel cell, and then the disc is separate. Okay. Um, so, anyways, we have this. So now, what do these look like? They look like this. Here's my dendrite that's going to come up. Okay, and then surrounding this. I am going to have connective tissue. And these are egg-shaped. I'm trying to make that egg-shaped, but it looks like a broken egg. These are gonna be kind of egg-shaped. This is connective tissue right here that surrounds this. Now, on the inside of this, what I have are a special type of cell called a Schwann cell. Schwann cells are responsible for making myelin, and if you recall, myelin is responsible for helping impulses get uh, to the brain faster, okay? So this is going to be my Meisner's corpuscle. And as you can see, if I press down, it goes down far enough, this eventually comes down and presses onto my Meisner's corpuscle, and then I'm gonna get the sensation, all right? Let's go on to the next one. The next one is called a pancinian corpuscle. So this was my Meisner. Now I'm going to get a pancinian corpuscle. Now if I were to just continue down in the dermis, right, and I call this my dermis down here, I am going to find pancinian corpuscles down around here. I'm going to draw these in just a minute, okay? So now, pancinian corpuscles. These are going to do deep pressure. They're going to feel pulsations. And they are going to feel high frequency vibrations. So if you remember, the Meisner's felt low frequency vibrations. This feels high. What do these look like? Let's go like this. Here's my dendrite. Here's my dendrite. And then these are going to be surrounded by 60 layers of connective tissue. Obviously, I'm not going to draw 60 layers of connective tissue. All right, so this is my dendrite. And this is connective tissue. Now, these, I'm just gonna write 60 layers because I thought that was interesting that there's 60 layers. But these also can be seen with the naked eye. They are about three millimeters large, which is about, I don't know, a quarter inch or so. You can see these with the naked eye. If you cut them in half, it actually looks like a, a sliced onion or an onion cut in half. So I'm gonna draw these down here. Okay, and this doesn't look anything like them, but close enough. So these are pen Pacinian. I had one too many A's in there. Okay, so there's my Pacinian corpuscles. And then the last one that's also gonna be found deep in here is going to be my Ruffini 
corpuscles. Okay, and then these are just going to have dendrites attached to them. Okay, and if you notice, Ruffini corpuscles are flat. All right, so let's erase this. And I keep erasing that where it says Meisner's corpuscle. I, 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 M I S S N E R C O R P. Okay. And there's my Pacinian. Let me just write Rafini over here. Oh, I already did it. So now, this is the Rafini corpuscles. Okay. They have a flat capsule. Okay. They also are deep in the dermis. Okay. And they're going to be responsible or they're going to sense pressure and distortion. They're also found in joint capsules, so I think they play a role in proprioception too. All right, so that's my tactile receptors. Um, as you see, we had five different ones. There's a lot to these. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.